All right, time for another edition here of Krantz's Corner. We're going to look around the AFC East a little bit. And yes, the Jets just had their Hall of Fame game, that really exciting game when we got to see all the first and second stringers on the bench and not playing and everyone else trying to find a roster spot. And we're going to talk to my buddy, Antoine Staley. He's the NFL and Jets reporter uh, and columnist for the New York Daily News, known him for a very long time while he was on Dolphins coverage down here for a couple of years as well, but he's been around the NFL a lot. Tuan, thanks for your time. Really appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. All right. So tell me what you got, if anything, out of the Hall of Fame game. I've got a million other questions for you, and basically none of them are what really happened in that game. But what did you get out of that game last night as the Jets guy? Uh, it's just two things, basically. Uh, Zach Wilson appeared to be a little bit more confident than what he had uh, shown in the past. I mean, we know that was like a big thing for him last year. He got benched a couple of times there late in the season. So to be able to see him not turn the ball over, even in a little bit of limited time that he played, and also, you know, exhibit some confidence, I think that was a big step. And then get Makai Beckton back on the field. And we're talking about a guy that hadn't played in, you know, two years, basically, and suffering that back knee injuries. For him, to he, even, he only had seven snaps. But, you know, I think they were meaningful just to get him back on the field and get him some confidence. So th- those are really the only two things I really took from that. Other than that, you know, it was just the Hall of Fame game and right. football is back, basically. <laughs> right. How, so what was the what was the Dolphins contingent like? Did you see Dolphin contingent up there? Yes. Because obviously Zach Thomas oh, is yeah. the big story down here getting into the Hall of Fame finally. Uh, so it was there was some Dolphin fans up there? Yeah, a ton. It was a ton of Dolphin fans. It was like the Dolphins were playing actually in the game. That's how many Dolphin fans. Wow. Were. Like, yeah, you could just see them because you see the aqua and orange just walking around. So I think, you know, it was a lot big contingency of Jets fans, obviously Browns fans being, you know, an hour away from Ken. But, you know, if I was to say the third, you know, most popular team there and this weekend would be is probably the Dolphins, considering Zach Thomas. And it was a long overdue for him to be in the Hall of Fame. I think we all agree with that. Yes. No, that's that's absolutely one thing. I was up there for Marino. I didn't get up there for JT uh, and their induction to the Hall of Fame. I really wanted to get up for this weekend because Zach was a huge part. And finally, like you said, finally, he got into the Hall of Fame after all these years being eligible for it. Um, Okay, so let's talk about the Jets a little bit as we preview kind of going into the NFL season. Obviously, the biggest uh, impact player they picked up is playing quarterback for that team, Aaron Rodgers. What's what you've seen in a camp or what have you seen a camp from him so far? Uh, he said some stuff on the on the TV broadcast for the Hall of Fame game about, you know, tr- you know, being that mentor for the younger guys. Brett Favre did it for him. I was surprised he brought up Brett Favre's name, but he said, Brett, I sat behind Brett for three years, learned a lot from him. I think it's the way of the NFL to kind of teach the young guys. Not a lot of older guys come out and say that whether he was being you know, honest or not, it was nice to hear him kind of be human for a couple of minutes. Yeah, I think he's, you know, with Brett, I think he, Brett didn't necessarily teach him a lot. He just kind of learned just right. by watching him. And I think with him, he just being a little bit more hands-on. And we're talking about a Jets team that has a lot of young players. So what I've seen really that I think is interesting, I hadn't seen from any other quarterback, is like even in practice, like doing, you know, you're doing 11 on 11 drills, like after the drill is over, he'll go up to talk to players and tell them like, hey, you know, this is what I saw. Like, maybe you could do this next time. You could do that. And he's talking not just with the offense, but the defensive side too. Wow. And letting them know, like, just kind of what they're doing and like his, the reason that he decided to do this instead of that. So I found that refreshing. Like I'd never seen, you know, a quarter, at least not during the practice, Maybe like, you know, after the practice when you're right. watching film, you know, you kind of, you know, play Monday morning quarterback. But, you know, and during live reps when the t- players on the side, he's, you know, ha- having those conversations like a coach, basically. So it's like a, he's not another coach on the field. So I think that's the most important thing I've kind of seen, too. I mean, we know the type of player that he is, still, even still at this age, still one of the best quarterbacks, you know, in the league, too. And obviously that's going to make a big difference with the Jets this upcoming year. We're talking about a team that finished 25th in offense last year. I expect them uh, to finish much higher than that, obviously. And then we'll have to see how Brees Hall and the offensive line kind of hand up, too. But, you know, I think he's definitely going to improve this unit you know, a ton, especially uh considering they have a top you know five defense too and i think they'll benefit from having a guy like aaron Rodgers. absolutely i'm glad you brought up Brees hall because i that was a question mark to me to make sure health wise and everything he'd be ready to go and be 100 percent or close to 100 percent 
for the season. Uh, what's, how's he been in pra- or what, what's he been like, whether it's sidelines on practice, whatever he's doing up there in camp so far. He's been on the PUP list since okay. uh, start since the training camp has started. They're trying to bring him along slowly. Uh, the goal is for him to be ready for week one. Right. Right? I mean, preseason really doesn't necessarily matter. I mean, the starters are not going to play either way. But I think, you know, ultimately, that, that's their interest in Dalvin Cook comes from this, that, you know, you look at running backs and the history of them coming off ACL injuries is not really good, especially recently. Right. So I think, you know, especially having a long-term investment in Brees Hall, they don't necessarily want to rush him. So to have a guy like Dalvin Cook that can kind of be a stopgap guy for a year, basically, while bringing Brees along slowly and he gets stronger and stronger as the season goes on, you know, I think that's a benefit for them. But yeah, I think, you know, they, they are very optimistic he will be ready for the season, just a matter of what he looks like. I don't, I don't expect the whole lot, especially coming off an ACL injury. And it was less for the, it's been less than a year since he mm-hmm. suffered the injury. So it's really like year two coming off the injury when you see that, you know, explosiveness and, you know, that you go back to the uh, player that you once were. Right. Right. Uh, Aaron also was got, and we saw him last year play Garrett Wilson and how good this kid could be. And maybe will end up being at, at this point, Aaron Rodgers gushing about him. Also another snippet a tidbit. I took off Aaron Rodgers on the broadcast for a little while during the hall of fame game, talking about this kid with the potential to be one of the greats, to be one of the really good players. And I know you got to talk up the young guys and all this. And we did see Garrett play last year. So he's not that far off from saying this kid could be something special, but how good or or what kind of jump you've seen him take uh, coming into this year's camp uh, from what he played last year. He was really good last year. So I'm not expecting you to go from, you know, A to Z on this, but where do you think he's going to be this year? Garrett Wilson wise in, in that top tier of wide receivers, if he can make it. They were well, just talk, compared to the Devontae Adams, but right, you know, I'm not necessarily going because Devontae is he arguably, I think, him and Tyree Kill are the best two receivers one A and one B, right? Exactly, yeah. I think so. It's kind of hard for me to say that, you know, right now, especially considering the year that you know, year just had a rookie year, so it's hard to just go from that. But I will say this like, for the considering the Jets quarterback situation and this, the fact that he played with so many different quarterbacks, I mean, he was productive. You know, considering that, y'all, just the turnstile. And it was, he finished with over 80 catches, had over a thousand yards, was the offensive rookie of the year. So I think he can, I don't know if he can be the best receiver in football. I, I guess I don't want to put that much pressure on him, right. but I think he can be one of the best in the league, definitely for sure. I think he has all the tools there, um, has, you know, good enough speed to get by defenders, really good route runner there, does just about everything. Good hands too. I, I hardly ever see him drop balls as well. So I definitely think he can be a top five to 10 receiver in this league. And that's, I think that's, you know, plenty damn good enough to um, win with. Yeah, I agree with that as well. I think that them bringing in a, like Lazard also and a couple of the veteran guys that played with Aaron before uh, Randall Cobb, you know, just to, to be with these younger guys, I think it's going to help out everybody, including Aaron, not get too frustrated at times. If one of the young guys isn't doing exactly what he wants by week three or week four, he's always got his, the older guys on one side, the younger guys, Kind of on the other. You brought up the defense before, and yes, that Jets defense is something special, I think. And young, too. We're not talking about a bunch of older guys. There's a bunch of young guys on that defense that are really showing off, including last year with, obviously, Sauce Gardner and Williams, one of the best on the defensive line, maybe in the NFL, if not right up there at 1A, 1B, 1, you know, 1C at that position. How much you like this defense this year to become, or not become, but stay up there in that top three, top five in the NFL? Well, you've had detractors, especially Dolphin fans, that would say that uh, they played a lot of backup quarterbacks. Like, I mean, they, right. they did, but they also played, you know, it, the schedule was what it was. But I also feel like, you know, you have to look at it from both sides, too. The, de- de- the offense was terrible. So they put the, the defense in, you know, odd situations. So they had to keep going back out on the field. And they still produced. And they still, you know, held opponents to, you know, whatever, you know, the total that they were forfeiting, you know, points allowed last year and yards. So I think considering that, I think they had an impressive year. And now you add a guy like an Aaron Rodgers that will be able to keep you on the sidelines a little bit longer, keep you fresher. I love their defensive line. You talked about Quentin Williams. I think, you know, he's up there, the top three defensive tackles in football. Obviously, Aaron Donald is still, you know, tremendous. Uh, And then I think I like the depth of their defensive line room, too. I mean, I think Jermaine Johnson is going to take another step, too. I mean, we both watched college football. We saw what he was in the ACC. 
right. at Florida State. Uh, I think he's he's flashing like kind of like how he was like that year at FSU where he was the ACC Defensive Player of the Year. So yeah, I think he's going to be a big benefit for them. You got C.J. Mosley who's still you know he's the veteran of the group, but he's still producing at a high yeah. level. And then Sauce Gardner, D.J. Reed, I think is very underrated. So yeah, this this defense is going to be I think you know, finish top five, top 10 once again. They think they can be number one in the league, and I wouldn't totally doubt it, but I definitely think, you know, you look at the AFC East as far as defenses, you know, it's, it's everybody has a good – I think the Dolphins, I think the Dolphins would be better, especially with Vic right. Fangio there. They might be the worst defense in, in the division, but I think they might finish 10th <laughs> right. you know, this year in defense because right. you got Buffalo that's really good. New England is always good in defense too, uh, especially being well coached by Belichick. And then you got the Jets hanging around there too. So it's going to be a really defensive battle between all four of those teams this year. Yeah, I think they're going to beat each other up all year long, all four of those teams. I mean, you brought up the AFC East. This is one of those years where, you know, we joke around maybe some years and say, man, three teams from this division can make the playoffs and two of them can be wild card. This could be it. The problem is they're going to beat each other up. I don't think that it's Buffalo going to win, you know, six straight against the AFC East or anything like that. I think there's going to be a lot of splits between these teams during the year where you're going to get one and lose one of those close ones. But the AFC East this year, man, it's going to be fun to watch. New England may be the worst team, but they're not bad. No, they're, they might be mediocre. Like, they're right. going to determine who wins the division because if you can sweep them, right? then I think you can win a division. That's what it's going to come down to because I don't think anybody's going to sweep Buffalo. I don't think anybody's going to sweep the Dolphins either. So I, I personally, it, on this day right now, like I would pick the Dolphins to win the division. But obviously they have questions too because obviously to his health and, you right. know, not because concussions aside, even beyond that, you know, can he stay healthy for a full 17 game season? I think that's the major question. You know, the Jets is the offensive line. You know, that's the big question for me. Uh, can they, you know, keep Aaron Rodgers upright the entire year, especially because he'll be 40 in December. The Bills, for me, the Bills are the, you know, team that's won the division three years in a row, but I don't feel like they necessarily improved a whole lot either. And then you got some smoke with Stefan Diggs and stuff like right. that. How happy is he? And so it's for me, like, I think the Jets and this is an opportunity for the Jets and the Dolphins to both take over the division on one or the other, because I feel like Buffalo, I do think Buffalo is still a playoff team, but I don't know if they're, they have the stranglehold of the division as they once was. And I, and I wonder, and I talked to an NFL source about like a higher up person have had a window closed because you got mm. at one time you thought they were the second best team in the AFC. Right. I don't think anybody's saying that anymore. I think the Bengals are there, you know, they've challenged, they, they put up fights against the chiefs uh, regularly. They arguably could have won that game in the AFC championship right. too, if not for a bad push call at the end of close to the end of the game. And then obviously the chiefs are all world with Patrick Mahomes and they're not going anywhere. So that third team, you know, we're still trying to figure out who that is. I don't think the consensus is Buffalo anymore. Like Miami could be there, Baltimore, Lamar Jackson, possibly if he can stay healthy too. And then the Jets have an opportunity as well. And I hadn't even brought up the Chargers or right. Jacksonville. Jacksonville, right. I think is you Jacksonville, know, right. nobody's really talking about Jacksonville either. They're a really sneaky team too. Yeah, I think Jacksonville is one of these teams that are going to sneak up, not sneak up anymore. Maybe last year was a sneak up year, but now people are really looking at them. Plus, that division is terrible. So they're wow. going to be able, they're going to be able, if they stay healthy and, and Trevor Lawrence stays healthy, it'll be fun to see what that True. team can do. Right. But I don't think anybody's really talking about them or giving them. No, respect. you're right. I mean, they, they put up a, as good of a fight as you could against the Chiefs last year. Right. So I, I think they're right there too. And Calvin Ridley's back too for Trevor yes. Lawrence too. That helps out a lot too when you bring back one of the best receivers. All right, let me get you, let me let you go on this one because you know I love gossip and there's there was a little bit of gossip last week. You never see this where another coach comes out and rips another coach like Sean. And you're shaking your head already. I haven't even gotten to the question because you know Sean Payton comes out and makes comments about Hackett and how bad he was in Denver and what a waste of a year it was for that team and Russell Wilson. And then of course Aaron comes to Hackett's defense like he should. That's his buddy. But I, you just don't see drama like that. You don't, that doesn't happen until maybe after a guy retires and he writes a book and says something stupid. But Sean Payton really coming into this, back into the NFL with like a firework up, as you know what? Like, this is crazy what happened. But it was interesting to see how the Jets guys handled it, Aaron Rodgers and Salah and everybody up there. What was it like covering that for the 72 or 96 hours? 
they they were not happy about that. Right. Yeah, the team is really routed around Nathaniel Hackett too. I mean, Billy Turner came out and you know had a you know remark about Sean Payton and you know talk about you know bounty gate, the, right? bounty gate, and all that <laughs> stuff too. So yeah, I mean it's it's been crazy, but you know I think as we we all heard this saying like some things just left but not not to be said better to be said we all knew right i'm not saying he's lying i think he, no. what he said he has is true in a lot of ways right but you just don't say that you know out loud it's something that you say behind closed doors you're going out to get a drink with somebody <laughs> off the record with a reporter but on the record yeah that's like pretty scathing like remarks too and then not to mention these teams play each other week five. Of course they so, do, right. So they, right. they actually help with my job because I'm thinking like, oh, yeah, I already know what I'm writing about week five, like right. the, like my main story. Because right. this is going to be, you know, it's going to be like high – the te- teams are going to be highly motivated to play the Broncos. Like it, it's not – they don't need – players don't need any extra motivation, but, but this they is just it. gave it to them. Right. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens with that. They, I know Nathaniel Hackett tried to downplay it and things like that too, but he's not obviously not happy with the whole thing either. If Hackett and Aaron Rodgers could put up 50 points on Denver that day, they're going to try to do it. There's oh, no Denver. doubt. There's oh, no doubt in my mind. And Denver has a really good defense too. If right. they can do that, then right. wow. Like, yeah, they, they might try that. Seriously. They're going to try. You know, that's going to end up trying at this point. Antoine, you know, I love talking to you. I love bringing you on Crancis Corner. You're a regular here. We're going to bug, we're going to bug you a bunch of times during the NFL season. Of course, you know, I love having you on. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, listen, we get to talk about the hall of fame game, that awesome hall of fame game that we both uh, got to witness one of us in person. And one of us, you know, on TV for that matter. But Antoine, thank you for your your time. We'll bug you again, and uh, we always appreciate your uh, your support here in Francis Corner. Yeah, anytime. Everybody's bugging me this year with Aaron Rodgers there, so I'm used to it. So hey, just, man, it's good to be just keep you. my name, but just make sure my name is on the phone, and so when I text you, you know it's me. And I got not you. random, not random number. When random number comes up, I know it's it's always I'll answer it as soon no, as no, I can. You're, but, you're definitely yeah. locked in. Yeah, you're not one of those random numbers. Yeah, you put a big smiley there. face right by me, like that's it. <laughs> That's Antoine Staley. He works for the uh, New York Daily News, covers the Jets, covers the NFL columnist as well. And like I said, a regular here on Crancis Corner. Antoine, have a great weekend. We appreciate it. We'll talk to you soon. All right. Thank you. Antoine Staley here on Crancis Corner.